WWE unveils a new world championship belt. CM Punk gets kicked out of WWE again. And we still don't have a number one contender for MJF's AEW championship. All this and more on Wrestling With The Business. From the palatial Insane Game Studios in Saratoga Springs, New York, this is Wrestling With The Business. I'm the varsity athlete Jeremy Baudet, and I'm joined by my tag team partners Matthew More Than Man Lambert, the pivotal Adam Perry, and the GM of Insane Games, the main man himself, Dan Shevlin. And just like every other week, we're going to take you through the ups and downs, the ins and outs, the high spots and the chair shots in the world of professional wrestling. But before we get into the nitty gritty, please take a moment to bro kick that like button and F5 the subscribe button to be sure you don't miss a moment of the action. Adam, give our viewers a taste of what's to come. Well, thank you, Jeremy. And as always here on Wrestling With The Business, we all watched a week's worth of wrestling so you don't have to. <laughs> and uh, yes, we're going to be covering everything uh, past SmackDown, Raw, AEW, plus all the news and dirt. There's a lot of it to cover, including as... Jeremy mentioned the brand new world heavyweight title in the du in the WWE. Uh, CM Punk continuing to make headlines, and what's going on with MJF. So, without further ado, Mr. Jeremy. SmackDown this week. So SmackDown this week, um, they seem to be doing a college tour or something like that. They were at the Ohio State University. Michael Cole and Wade Barrett uh, on the mic. Um, some very interesting calls that I won't review into too much detail this week, but uh, uh, Michael Cole unveiled uh, the jacked, tan, and juicy call. He was describing Braun Strowman and Ricochet, jacked, tan, and juicy. For some reason, that wasn't all over social media. I don't know why. I felt like a crazy person. And um, Wade Barrett referred to when Matt Riddle arrived uh, to the ring, uh, he referred to him as things are going to get a little X-rated. Uh, they didn't get X-rated, don't worry. Um, anyways, so takeaways. So Judgment Day versus LWO is still the hottest rivalry in WWE, frankly. Um, although the Bad Bunny story is still a little distracting, and they're trying to force the Zelina Vega versus Rhea Ripley um, matchup, which they're pushing for backlash. Basically, Zelina Vega came on and said, uh, you need to give me a match against Rhea Ripley at Backlash because I'm the only Puerto Rican on the roster. And Adam Pierce was like, okay, go away. She's sure to win. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Like they're going to put her over. Um, but it, it, I don't know. It kind of seems like they're trying to give it some legs. They're trying to limp it to Night of Champions or something. Like, I don't even know what they're limping they to They got to give it some but, story. Yeah. So um, that's where that is. Um, Jack Tan and Juicy which is Braun Strowman and uh, Ricochet, uh, is a pretty dynamic and interesting tag team with, I think, huge potential. They're still extremely rusty. This match had both my favorite high spot and low spot. They went against um, the Viking Raiders. And at one point, um, during uh, Braun Strowman tagged Ricochet in, his first tag in, and he literally just picked him up like a baby and just hurled him into the ring. And Ricochet just landed on his back in the middle of the ring. Didn't hit anybody, didn't go over any, like rolled, rolled into Ivar's feet. And you could tell Strowman realized what he'd done. So he ran behind Ricochet and smacked Ivar in the face with Ricochet at his feet. It was hysterical. But then they saved it like a minute later, Ricochet did like this cartwheel back handspring out of the ring into both of them. And it, it was a really good spot. So very dynamic, very interesting. If the WWE decides to dig into that one, that'd be cool. Um, in the women's division, um, Liv Rod versus Green DeVille is good wrestling. Their match this week was actually pretty good. It was well executed, but there's no excitement. Um, one thing that's kind of confusing is each team is kind of trying to out-heal each other. So you see, like, Green will, like, throw water in Liv Morgan's face one week, and then or, like, on Monday, and then on Friday uh, in this match, uh, Liv Morgan and Rodriguez went over because while Liv Morgan was pinning Green, Rodriguez like put her feet on her back and used the ropes to like push. Aren't they the baby faces? Exactly. 
Like that's what I'm saying. It's it's hmm. creating a lot of confusion. The crowd isn't really into it. You can totally tell that they're piping in sound for their matches. Um, so good wrestling, but absolutely zero crowd interest. Um, Woods versus Gunther ends the way we knew it would. Um, Gunther goes over like every Gunther match. There were a thousand chops in the match. Um, I don't know what's next for Woods, but I, he's putting them over. I mean, he's giving them good matches, so I hope they do something interesting with him next. Um, but they didn't tease anything with him next. Um, and then um, the main event shows, I think, how tired the story, the main story between, you know, Bloodline and Zayn and, and Riddle and KO is actually getting. The excitement of Riddle's addition from just a couple of weeks ago has already burned off, um, and it's faded, and... Um, Riddle is really bad on the mic, and that's really not helping either. Um, we need somebody like Kevin Owens to just steal the mic from them all the time because mm -hmm. they're all just drunk. So, I think it's um, time to move on from that storyline. Yeah, overall, I, I give it a 2 out of 5. Um, there's just not this close to backlash. There's just not a lot of stuff happening to move stories forward. So, honestly, it came off as pretty boring overall. So, that's where we are. So, What's the next major pay-per-view? Backlash. backlash. Well, next. like, What's the next like big, big one? SummerSlam. SummerSlam in August. They don't have one in between? Mm -mm. I mean, there's a couple minor ones, but that's the big... When's Hell in the Cell? Uh, January later. or February, isn't it? Or no, October. No, Sorry, later. October. That's before Survivor Series, yeah. That's the last one before Survivor Series. So after that, they're going to Saudi Arabia at the end of mm, May. That could be what they're trying And then to what's yeah. July? July... What's the one in early July? It used to be Great Balls of Fire. Yeah, I don't know where it is now. <laughs> but there's one in early July. Survivor Series is when? That's the end November. of November. November. Royal Rumble, January. Yeah. SummerSlam, yeah, I guess they're there. So. I mean, I guess when you look at it, WrestleMania, April, SummerSlam, August, I guess, I mean. It's kind of a lull. It's like it's too early to start any big pushes, yeah. even for SummerSlam, but it's with we're still coming off the WrestleMania high. So we're kind yeah, of. They could be. Maybe they're trying to push everything until SummerSlam for a you know, good the other ending, thing, you know. The other thing that I didn't mention is the draft starts oh, that's today. True. Yeah, everything's on hold until the So, draft. yeah, I mean, like. How much? How invested do you want to be in storylines when true. teams are just going to get ripped apart? So that's another thing. I mean, maybe it even was a one out of five then. Now that I think about it. So, anyways, how was Raw, Adam? All right. Well, yeah, Monday Night Raw from the Allstate Arena in Chicago, Illinois. That will, uh, you know, play a big part in the story a little bit later when we talk about the back news stuff. Uh, we start off Raw with uh, Cody Rhodes, the man. You know, he is pro wrestling right now in a you know kicking off the show crowds in his hands eating every word he says we get finn balor come out and they do a nice little build to a match that they are going to have later and then we go right to the uh first match of the night and uh yet again it's a it's another six-man tag match just like the last two raws uh bloodline versus the lwo um this match goes eight minutes 40 seconds with the uh, bloodline getting a pinfall on um, Del Toro, it was an exciting match. Um, it it definitely kicked off Raw in a good way. Crowd got invested. They you know, um, good big spots, good excitement. Um, they're still making Solo look extremely strong. So obviously he's getting a major major push. Um, so not bad, not a bit, you know, even though we've seen, a, you know, it seems endless six-man tags over these last few weeks, this wasn't bad. Um, then we go to post-match segment with uh, Sami Zayn and Jey Uso, and I got it. We, we get it, guys. Jey Uso is questioning his involvement in the bloodline. But this was the first of, like, four or five segments. They are beating it to death, and they beat it to death before WrestleMania two. It's getting old. I, I would have much rather had another match than three other segments on this particular story. Um, Again, they don't know what to do until the draft. Exactly. It, well, but even still, it, it, it. Again, you know, we talked about this last week. That this whole bloodline thing should have ended at WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. And like Jeremy was saying, it's getting old. You know, even on SmackDown with the good match, it's getting old. Yep. Um. Match number two didn't make the Hulu cut, but it's Street Profits versus uh, Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin. Two minutes, 20 seconds. No respect for Shelton Benjamin. Oh, my God. But he, we but, wonder but, why it was cut. Right, cutting the women's segments but, but, for that. But, but here's the thing, though. 
what they did do in the ring kept my interest. I wanted more of it. Yeah, they're all excellent wrestlers. You know, I mean, this this was fun. You know, Street Profits come in in the throwback uh, Chicago Bulls gear. That was cool. You know, and then, then uh, they do their thing in the ring. I just wanted more. You know, mm-hmm. this is stuff you should be highlighting. You know, we'll, we'll get, we're going to get to that because it's all in my rant later. Um, segment number two is the segment that has the whole wrestling world in a buzz. I'm going to table that for now because it is my rant, which we're going to do after we do all of our reviews and news. So, but, you know, just to name it, it is the Triple H announcement of the new World Heavyweight Championship title belt and what he does from there on and how it's going to play out. So, um, match number three, uh, yet again, did not make the Hulu Cup. Bianca Blair, the champion with uh, Liv Rod versus Damage Control. Eight minutes and 57 seconds. Um, the winner's going to uh, Belair and Liv Rod after uh, the KOD to Bailey. Um, better performances from these women than I've seen in the last couple weeks. Um, crowd was entertained. They were into it. Um, I think a lot of that had to do with Bailey being in the ring. And that's what I did. I don't like seeing Bailey in this position. She's too damn good. And she deserves better. So to be, uh, you know, on a mid card throwaway six woman tag, go figure. Mm. And to, you know, to get a, a cheap, you know, pinfall, not, not really working with me here. Um, then match number four. Yet again, three matches that did not make the Hulu cut because of so many uh, vignettes and segments played out through Raw. Mustafa Ali versus Chad Gable. One minute and 50 seconds. Jeez. <laughs> and again, just like the uh, Bel- uh, Shelton Benjamin match, you know. Th- and Gable's th- great. Th- these guys were fantastic for the minute and 50 seconds they were in. I wanted more. I'm amazed uh, like, Ali is still there. He's wanted out for like, so long. Guys, the, this is the, the people that you want in the ring for, you know, 8 to 11 minutes mm-hmm. in your show or and more. stealing the show. And he, it's a minute and a half. It, it's an insult to the talent. And it won because it was so short. And it had nothing to do with the talent. Worst match of the night. It was just, you know, and, you know, just for sake of saying it, Ali wins after uh, he does a... Weird reversal to um, Gable's dragon suplex. It, what a shame. What yeah. a gif. It's not a problem with the talent. It's a problem with it's the a, it, Yes, exactly. Uh, match number five, match of the night, hands down. Cody Rhodes, Finn Balor. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It, these two had the crowd in their hand. Again, just like I, Finn Balor, and uh, even more so than Finn Balor and Rey Mysterio. Guys, why isn't this a pay-per-view main event? This was a, a great match, match of the night. Wasted opportunity for later on down the road. Wasted opportunity for a storyline down the road, especially wherever they're, you know, hopefully they're pushing Cody Rhodes. Yeah, there's no story behind it, yeah. Um, but fantastic match. Uh, again, Cody, to me, is proving why he is the next wrestling icon of this generation. Mm-hmm. He, I mean, the guy is just on the mic, ring presence, uh, in ring performance, just he's the total package, and you know Finn Balor, he's proven himself. Mm-hmm. You know, fantastic match, crowd, totally into it. Um, and then you know the main event, guys, <laughs> Rey Mysterio versus Damian Priest, eleven minutes twenty seconds. Rey Mysterio oh, yeah. wins. I'm gonna be blunt. I don't give a flying fuck about Bad Bunny. <laughs> This match was literally did nothing but push the Bad Bunny story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was a waste of time for Rey Mysterio, waste of time for Damian Priest. Uh, right, Bad I Bunny mean, came in at the end. And, and yeah, and it, it was just a waste of time. Wait a minute. Cody Rhodes and Finn Balor wasn't the main event? No. 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 Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. No, and, and here's the thing, guys. It's like... Yeah. Nothing, nothing but respect to Bad Bunny. Clearly, he's, he's an athlete. You know, he's a mainstream draw. He's a you know, he, I could care less about his music, but I'll I'll give him the credit where credits due. He is an athlete. 
he does get in there and he he puts in the work and whatever he's doing but i don't care and to to close raw put that over cody rhodes and finn balor come on guys i'd be curious to see if he was actually a draw to that third hour to the main event uh, who knows i i mean uh, the, i mean they they, they promoted one, they promoted him like crazy i'll give you those stats in a bit you okay. know okay. and they did tease him earlier in the show yeah arriving in a yeah. limo classic wcw style yeah and and so you know so in total with all the stupid vignettes and all the teasing of bad bunny obviously the triple h segment we only got 44 minutes and nine seconds Oof. of in ring almost a total a whole 20 minutes compared to the last two weeks unacceptable in my book in a three-hour wrestling show but yeah. and the three matches cut from hulu were only a total yeah, exactly exactly you know so like i again i i don't have cable i'll admit it you know so i yes. watch i usually watch this through hulu and what i can't get on hulu oh youtube or whatever other streaming device and yeah i watched a show of vignettes and a handful of ma- like couple yeah, matches a lot of talking mm-hmm. you know so it not the best raw in the world except you know again the highlight cody rhodes finn balor excellent wasted opportunity we'll hear more about my opinion on raw in my rant later on but matt time for AEW. AEW dynamite coming from florida i didn't catch the city i was i'll be honest this episode I was looking at a little more critically for whatever reason. Maybe I didn't eat enough for dinner or whatnot, but I was noticing botches in every single match on Mm -hmm. this show. Every match had at least one botch spot, and, well, let's just go through it. So the first match, opening with a match, always good. Orange Cassidy versus Bandito. Great match. Um, Bandito botched a pop-up cutter spot, which, whatever. It was still a very good match. Go out of where you see it. Um, after that were some, uh, backstage interviews, Adam Cole, Jungle Boy, Darby Allen. The next match though, Jeff Jarrett versus Dax Harwood. Dax was working so hard to make Jeff Jarrett look good, but uh, he's what, 53, 55? Yeah. Horrible. It was, it was not and good. And he looks every day of it. Mm-hmm. He looks rough. Um, at least three major spots 55, were, were right? ruined. Yeah, 55, 55. yeah. Um, but Jarrett ended up winning after some interference from his stable that was ejected at the beginning of the match, but Mm -hmm. still they came out. Um, After that, Tony Khan announced the Owen Hart Cup, where matches are going to be happening at Forbidden Door, and the finals will be in Calgary Mm -hmm. in June. That should be a fun tournament to watch. Can I just say that if AEW has done one thing right, that's aligning himself with um, the Hart family for the Owen. Yeah. I mean, because we all know that, you know, never, ever, ever, ever is um, he going to be showing up in the WWE ever again. No. no. So the fact His that his wife won't allow it. Uh, I know. And I mean, that's, that, that, that's a show in itself to talk yeah, about. I can't but, blame her. Um, Who but, was that? Uh, Owen Martha Hart. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, Doctor. Uh, Sorry. And um, I just, yeah, I just want to say, you know, bravo to AEW for teaming with the mm-hmm. Owen Hart's family yeah. and, uh, you know, the, the, giving the legend his due. You know, on top of the, you know, the, I mean, the charity stuff is fantastic. Right. You know, but to, to see someone acknowledging the talent that was Owen Hart. And on the plus know. side, because of their um, partnership with it, with New Japan, they have his mm. video from when he was in Japan and he was the yeah. light heavyweight champion and everything. So it's I they're mean, able to show that stuff, which is great. They're, it's not the yeah. stuff held on by WWE. Don't go too deep because that's a topic for later. Okay. Uh, so after that was the TNT Championship, Wardlow versus an unnamed opponent. It was a squash, lasted less than two minutes. Um, but this built to his next opponent, which is going to be Luchasaurus. Christian mm. and Luchasaurus came out. That's better. I think the only reason Arn Anderson is his manager now is for the promos between him and Christian. But uh, nothing happened on this on this episode with them. So uh, another interview backstage with Sammy Guevara and MJF. They exchanged gifts. Best friends. Yeah. Best friends. Yep. Um, and they strongly hinted at this point that the match at the pay per view is going to be a four way. MJF said something about you know Tony Khan thinks it's going to be a four way. We proved them wrong with the whole laying down for him and everything. Whatever. 
Um, next was the match with Sammy Guevara and Darby Allen, the finals of this two-match tournament. We'll get more into that later, but I have not been crazy about this whole four pillars tournament thing. Just I think it could have been done so much better. Um, M or Sammy Guevara wins the match after actually Darby got DQ'd. You don't it was see an many interesting spot. You don't see many disqualifications in AEW. Um, yeah, he did the whole Eddie Guerrero fake chair shot sell with a skateboard. With a skateboard, right? Um, after that. Tony Schiavone gets on the mic and says, Tony Khan, just let me know. There's going to be a tag match next week, MJF and Sammy versus Darby and Jungle Boy. If Darby and Jungle Boy win, they're added to the match, and it's a four-way. So we kind of see where this is going. It's still a month out from the pay-per-view, yeah, yeah. so they still got a lot of time to fill. Um, next, Adam Cole comes out. This was the highlight of the show for me. Uh, Adam Cole comes out, calls out Chris Jericho. Uh, Jericho shows up on the screen, says he's not coming out, sends out the JAS to beat up uh, Adam Cole. Orange Cassidy and Bandito come out for the save for some reason. Uh, they get beat down, and then who comes out? What? This was so good. I start hearing Kill Switch Engage, End of Hardeck. Yep, Mr. Strong. Comes out. Roderick Strong makes his debut. He was still listed on the NXT roster up until he debuted last night. Really? This was a complete surprise. And for those who don't know Roderick Strong, he was big in Ring of Honor early on in, in their history. He was big in NXT with Adam Cole. Um, this was awesome. So it's great to see him there. He's there with Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly. His wife is there, Marina Shafir. They're all in AEW He'll together. He'll be a good so. mid-carder for him. Absolutely. Yep. He's one of my favorites. He's the modern-day Dean Malenko, I think. I would agree with Fair. Um, next was another bit of a disappointment. The TBS Championship, Jade Cargill versus Taya Valkyrie. I, I think I mentioned this last week, but this TBS Championship, like the Roman Reigns thing, it's gone on too long. Isn't she like 56 and 0 or something? She's had the belt over a year, yeah. Yeah, it's like... Taya Valkyrie, this is the first real storyline they've had for this belt. She was the first real credible uh, contender for the belt and she, the whole step of this match was she they used the same finisher and Taya wasn't allowed to use it in this match or else she'd be disqualified mm. in the go home of the match she goes to use her finisher Taya thinks thinks about it decides not to do it and then just kind of stands there and waits to get rolled up by Jade and the commentary tried to cover it up like Jade grabbed the tights but she really didn't it's kind of a lame duck finish, and the rain continues. I guess there's room there for a rematch, but it's just kind of like who cares at this point. And then after a couple more quick uh, vignettes and interviews, the main event was Kenny Omega and Kanesuke Takeshita versus Butcher and the Blade. This was a very good match. Um, kind of saw what the finish was going to be. It just led to uh, another Blackpool Combat Club attack after the win uh Takeshi and Omega won um and Takeshita gets attacked with a screwdriver after he refused to join the Blackpool Combat Club yes, so I saw that. Yeah. looks like Takeshita might be joining the elite instead that looked pretty good too that screwdriver attack yeah he started good. gushing right away yeah it looked good overall two and a half three out of five again I was looking at it through a little critical eye for some reason this week but it was still a you good episode you went the hard way with the screwdriver it looked like it. It was pretty quick. He started. That's bleeding. kind of a Japan thing, right? Don't they go the hard way a lot in Japan? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he might have taken it the hard way. It's possible. I don't know. But that's it uh, for AEW highlights. I think AEW. I got a, I got a question for you, man. <clears throat> yeah. Because you're the AEW guy. <laughs> Why do I care? <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. It seems like they have what a lot of people are looking for. Writing wise, script wise, mm -hmm. you got the interference, you got the full matches, you have the right segments. It's not three hours. Good talent. So, yeah. why do you think it's not going in the direction it should? Like, is it too much old wrestlers? Is it wrestlers that people don't want to see? Is it too much going on in one episode? Like, well, I feel like it's so action packed that there's too much going on. 
that, that, I mean, is that, that is that is a possibility. I think it's also because WWE has dominated for so long right. that anyone who could be turned on to wrestling again or brought back to wrestling, if it's not WWE, then they don't want to. They don't right, want right. to see it. They don't understand it. I, I mean, yeah. If they if they could if AW could promote themselves better and really get their name out there, I think they would turn things around. But they just haven't gotten that gotten to that point. You may yet. not like this, but I, I I'm my opinion is I think they're falling. They're starting to fall apart a little bit. I I agree. I think the. AW came in and they were the hot ticket, the hot thing, mm-hmm. and I think they're now Tony Khan is finally starting to see some of the problems that WWE had. Because you remember when when there's only WWE, that's the only problem there, like that's the only thing. And then AEW comes along, that's 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 the solution to everyone's problems. Like that is that's the promise, that's the paradise city, you know, that's where we're going. And now like I, I feel like there's so much talent there. And so many people who want, and so many people who left WWE upset, they left WWE upset for a reason. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like now, they're, I think I think they're finally starting to get a little bit of that. You mentioned the talent in Arn Anderson's promo after the Wardlow match. He was trying to hype up Wardlow, telling him he's got to be cutthroat and whatever. And he said a line. I I had to rewatch it a couple of times, but he said there's 150 talent backstage a lot. that Wardlow needs to be better than. That's what he was getting that's at. A lot. 150, yeah. For that's one insane. show. One show that's two hours. I mean, right. the other one's an hour, but it's not really... I mean, it's taped. It's. I mean, they, I mean, they really I, should have two shows. I are, didn't realize they had that big of a... I mean, we know the roster's big, but that's huge. 150 people. Well, Dan, why don't you update us on well, some well, news? Well, off of that quick question, let's go right into ratings. So, I brought up why is AEW... Um, you know, why is it not going? Because um, they're down 830,000 in viewers, um, down, I think, from like 150 the week before, or 850 the week before. So I know it's not much, but still, they, they're having a problem getting over that million. There was a lot of teasers, too. I mean, it was all over social media. Tony Khan speaks. I mean, they were pushing a lot of interesting news ahead I think, of. I think it's too much. I think it's too much major announcement. Like, how many major announcements is Tony yeah, Khan going to have? He always has a major Like, it, it's getting yeah. to the point where it's like, and then, you know, and I tell you, people do not like that. If they go to one major announcement, I know that I can speak for myself. When I go to watch, like, the Triple H a couple weeks ago, making a big announcement, when I go and it's that disappointing that it's, oh, we're just doing the draft, or, like, it's, you know, mm-hmm. I, we're doing, like, people aren't going to come back to that again. Like, that's going to lose its touch very, very quickly. A major announcement. We're coming to South Dakota. Yeah, like, like, you know. <laughs> but, you know, here's the thing, you know, with uh, Tony Khan, and it's a point I'm going to hit on with Vince when I in the rant section. He seems like a guy who uh, wants to be the star of the show rather than the people who are supposed to be the stars, the wrestlers, you know. He looks like he's looking for every opportunity to be out there. Well, I don't mind that. To the sake of, I like there being an authority figure. An authority figure. figure. Like, okay. There's got to be someone, maybe not taking up too much time, but at least they have someone coming out and laying the rules and the smackdown down or whatever. But like, Adam Pierce, like, I, I just don't get it. I don't get the whole no, Adam no Pierce situation. That, yeah. But I, I get what Adam's saying. Like, Tony Khan is, you know, it, 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 Tony Khan, I think people are starting to realize a little bit, is very Tony he's Khan. He's a fan. You he's know, a fan. He's a he, fan. Yeah. You know, he, he's not a booker. He's not. Uh, you know, but I also think he guy. likes to see himself he, he, in the camp. He's a wrestling fan, you know. Mm-hmm. Vince Russo esque, uh, you know. Don't don't bad. soil his good name. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm, Vince I, Russo, not, you know, not you know, in the sense that you until know, he starts putting people's moms he, on forklifts, he, li- he likes being gonna, in front of the camera. He likes being the ham, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Till he puts Judy Bagwell on a on, on a pole. I'm gonna judge you. So. All in all, all the shows are down. AEW down, uh, eight hundred and thirty thousand viewers. SmackDown, uh, two point one eight. They were down, I think, from two point three the week before. Yeah. Um, and then Raw was down two percent, one point nine five hour one, one point nine two hour two, one point five eight hour three. Wow. So a big There's big a drop, almost bad bunny you, drop. almost twenty five percent drop. For hour three, so that's. Might have been you. <laughs> I wonder if they went to you. What do you mean? Oh no, you're talking about Monday. Night Monday. Night. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Monday well, night. you know, maybe instead of a minute and five 
wrestling with great wrestlers yeah. and well, you know more of that rather than 10 minutes of backstage with Jey Uso not knowing where he lives in life. <laughs> we want me to what the problem you know, was people saw the Finn Balor, Cody Rhodes. If I had to guess, yeah. it would probably be at the top of the hour. Yeah. They, yeah. It ended. Yeah, yep. they teased it. Yeah. Why would you want to watch anything else after that? Right. Like that, I mean, exactly. that's like, I mean, come on. If, if you're there to watch the wrestling, that's going to be the best match of the night. Why is any, why would you stick around for hour three? When, oh, Cody Rhodes is done. I'm not going to see him the rest of the night. Adios. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, same thing with Finn Balor. I mean, Finn Balor is pretty popular. He or not, people like him. You know, I mean, after those two are done, who's going to watch? Yeah. Especially if they're the top two guys on the whole show. Yeah. Like, I don't know who else is on that episode that much, but, like, if those top two guys are done at, at, at 10 o'clock, adios. Okay, I, I, I got an hour. Thanks. I, I can go to bed early. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. people aren't going to wait around until 11 o'clock. Um, yeah, so that's the rating. So everyone's down quite a bit, which, you know, again, call it the time of the year. You know, I know football's over with now, so you would think they'd be going up a little bit, but, you know, it is the after WrestleMania um, – syndrome where everything's kind of quiet and again you have the draft no one knows what's going on backlash doesn't seem to be all that hyped up so it's kind of like you know roman's not oh, there hey, so hey, who's... wait a minute rhea ripley versus oh, I... zelina vega come on <laughs> <laughs> um, keep your tongue in your head <laughs> so not a lot of small news and but we have a lot of big items to go over um kind of breaking came out yesterday um i don't know if we know too much about it just yet because it came out so recently but wwe lawsuit filed um, yep. by a, um, a former writer, right? Not yep. writer. Um, discrimination, racist stuff, storylines. She being forced to do stuff that she didn't want to write about. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know what to take on that. I mean, I, I don't know what... yet. The claims are pretty salacious. Someone should tell Freddie Prince Jr. he's never going to be relevant again. Just <laughs> stop. Uh, <laughs> he'll mean... keep going on Brian Alvarez's <laughs> show and he'll be relevant. I mean, I, I think the timing of it is in the middle of the talks or not talk but you know one company ending another one starting so i think there's a little bit of that involved um you know i again i haven't read it have she you guys left, read it? i think a year ago the company right so i mean to your point dan i mean the timing is interesting like I maybe they, is, they saw an opportunity again not saying that this did or didn't happen at all maybe it did maybe it didn't i don't know but whether it did happen or it didn't it is very convenient for these claims to come out now when yeah, they're gonna rush through to to uh, try to get a solution as quickly as possible to make sure the merger goes through. Mm-hmm. Vince McMahon name, Stephanie McMahon named. I thought that was interesting, and then a bunch of writers are named as well. Yeah, a bunch of other. And then writers. WWE as a whole. Uh, Chris Dunn, Ryan Callahan, Jennifer Pepperman, Christine Lubrano, Mike Heller, Vince, and Stephanie. Hmm. That's who's named. So, I mean, I think again, I don't know what where the claims go or how they handle that or you know what her person what her damages is to that i don't know um you know it'll be interesting i know i know the one thing she wanted was to be uh, reinstated that, that was the, you go back that was work? the first <laughs> ask i saw was to be reinstated yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna sue the shit out of you can I my job so I'm, right? I'm gonna read it if we got time for one sentence i'll read the first sentence of the nature of the claims this is a civil action for declaratory injunctive and equitable relief as well as monetary damages to redress defendants' unlawful employment practices against plaintiff, including their discriminatory treatment, harassment, hostile work environment, wrongful termination, and unlawful retaliation against the plaintiff due to her race, color, and gender uh, in violation of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Wrongful termination, apparently because she took a um, souvenir chair from WrestleMania when she wasn't supposed to. Something along those lines. I don't know. Yeah. I'm sure there'll be more on this as it, as it yeah, comes yeah. in. Or we won't hear it again because they'll just settle it and no one will know what's, what's what and it'll be done. Well, so. and, you know, and that's just it. You know, you know, th- yeah, as you said, this is, and... this is fairly new, like literally as we're recording this. So we'll get time to uh, break it down, digest it. And if it's something you want to hear about next week, we'll, we'll get into it then. But so interesting. A lot of weekly news surrounding Raw. Obviously, um, we had um, the WWE World Heavyweight Championship now being named. Um, Triple H came out. I know Adam, and we'll talk about it a little bit. Um, but a lot of players in the ring for that. Um, Seth um, Rollins being number one. So mm, I don't know yeah. where that's going to go. Um, and what's Triple H's idea, though? 
from what I've been reading. It's Triple oh, yeah. H who wanted the title. He loves the World Heavyweight so, Championship. He loves and, um, WCW. They're even talking about splitting up pay-per-views now, having SmackDown. And with it's the, stated the that that belt will be for yeah. Raw. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it would be a big <sighs> surprise. Well, Where's Seth they, Rollins going, guys? It'll be a they big said surprise. whatever one Roman is. Well, they, they, they think it's going to be a big surprise that Roman leaves SmackDown. So, but again, wherever Roman goes, that other one's going. But I've mm-hmm. got to imagine it probably, it feels like a Raw belt. I can see that belt on Raw. Yeah. More on SmackDown. I see it. It's a, it's a good fit for Raw, I think. I, I, again, I'm, I'm going to, I have my moment here with this. You're gearing up. But. <laughs> we're getting, we're slowly I mean, getting him. You need to let him go. We're, we're slowly but getting but him that, fired up. But, but, but here's the thing, that that is the best looking belt that they've had in over 20 years. I'm sorry, guys. The spinner belt the, the new one, yeah. You know, the one after that where it didn't spin but kind of looked like the spinner belt sucked. These ones here, okay, look, not bad, comic booky. Mm, I love you know, these toys. They're, 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 you cannot sell me on any belt that looks better than these. No, I'm sorry. The, these look like a comic book. Now, I really like how you can put the wrestler's uh, logo and plate on each side, which they kept on the new belt, which is beautiful. Yeah, that's cool. That belt looks like someone, something a champion could wear proudly, which is why we need one. But I'll let you continue. <laughs> <laughs> teases, teases. Well, that, that needs to be another debate for another day is what belt looks better. Cause I'm, it's a nice-looking belt, but I, those ones, I, I'm sorry. Those, those ones right there, yeah, I think they're one of the best ones they've ever created. Um, yeah, Big E rumored to return at the draft. So I'll rather that's tomorrow night or right after the draft. That's um, a feel-good story to yeah, keep yeah, nice. So he's slowly starting to make his way into yeah. the, yeah, he looks the good. rumors and videos news again. On so social media that, of him bench that, pressing and stuff. He that poor good. bastard, the way he fell, I mean, it made your heart stop. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, let's jump on Raw a little bit. We kind of left it for a second. CM Punk backstage. Oh, yeah, that's right. So, uh, I totally <laughs> forgot about that. So that's oh, a big, that, you on. know. It kind of shed some light. It's been reported that Jericho and, and CM Punk met last week. Didn't necessarily go that well. Nothing really came from it. So there's – it all depends on who you ask from what I can read. People saying it's a publicity stunt for AEW, and then some are saying he's actually looking to go to WWE now. And it's kind of like – I think ask – there's something – let me put it this way. Whatever way it is, there is a reason why he was there on Monday. And it wasn't just to become friends with The Miz again. That that's you know he's not there to amend his relationship with the Miz. He's there for a reason, and and, and rather that's to get a minute with Triple H, which is reported that he did, or whatever the case may be. But he was there for a reason, and if it's if it's to help plug him to AEW for them to sign him again, or to try to get with a, or WWE. All I know is Vince kicked him out at the end, by the end of the show. He's recruiting so. Triple H to AEW. Yeah. So there's something. <laughs> the you would leave your that. wife, <laughs> leave your children. I, I think there's something there, one way or another. Rather, it's for whatever company. He didn't just show up there for no reason. Um, but it is rumored Vince told him to leave, probably because he is under contract with AEW. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so he met with Jericho last week. Again, they said nothing really came out of that. Jericho is uh, apparently the right ear to Tony Khan these days, so. Yep. You know, if Jericho doesn't, I mean, I guess there was a beef between Jericho and Punk before. Do you know? You know, I, I thought really, that they, all was just from the same. Yeah, I guess issue. they they didn't really, and I guess that led to the whole when they had the whole brawl. Jericho was yelling at Punk, and you know, and and after I, that he was calling Punk a cancer, and, and he, sure he he did do a couple of tweets, I think, yeah. yeah, called him a stooge, I think, or something, um, something like that, and which he then deleted, um, but. Um, yeah, and then Vince, speaking of Vince, made a lot of changes to Raw. Remote changes. Um, apparently came down, I guess, the talent unhappy with that. So a lot of people. A lot of women's changes again. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't know what Vince is trying to accomplish with that. I mean, I hope someone can show him the numbers. Not that he cares. He's seen him for 50 years, but, like. Do you think that he just calls Michael Cole's cell phone, and when it rings, Michael Cole says, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, excuse me. I would like to know the process the, of that. From the like, who is commission? there to get the phone call from Vince? It's probably Pritchard or is it Hunter. Kevin it's Dunn? Is Kevin, Kevin Dunn, Dunn still there? Maybe. Is, there? is he at the weekly? Or I he's mean, probably calling all of them. I'm and sure saying, Nick Khan's there. On? He's probably getting you know. I mean, I like to know what is the they, practice. They hired like, a guy and they just duct tape a phone to his forehead. I wonder if they have like a TV that he like Zoom calls in or something. Right. 
And you can ever see his, you know, his hey, new Kendra, hairdo and his mustache. Punch that guy in the face as hard as you can. <laughs> that is a bad idea. But yeah, yeah so the, again, not, damn it, they're actually not wrestling. Change it now. <laughs> More talking. <laughs> Um, off of the draft, wrestlers really don't know where they're going. I guess a lot of them have really no idea. Yeah, they're trying to do, like, real reactions. Yeah, so they, real no one really knows what the plan is or that. AJ Styles has been out, obviously, with injury, but he's not been seen anywhere, like, even Performance Center. So there may be a little something there. I can see AJ looking to, you know, fly the coop at this point. I think maybe he's accomplished hmm. what he's accomplished in WWE. Go back to North Carolina and get deleted. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I've, I was shocked when the Royal Rumble came and AJ Styles wasn't there. I didn't realize he was injured at the time. But I'm like, you know what? Where's, there's no AJ Styles and no WrestleMania, no nothing. Um, so he's kind of been out of the loop. I guess he's not training at all anywhere unless he's doing it on his own time, at his own place, um, which could be the case. Um, but uh, Robert Roode out for a long time. Um, so he don't expect him back anytime another soon. Another injury, right? Yeah, another. He didn't get an infusion, I guess that he was supposed to get. Yeah. And then mm. I guess that's now put him back to where he's gonna be out like probably through the summer, probably not back till the fall. Uh, I've never been a Robert Roo fan, so I really. Don't. Oh, I miss him. I like. Him. I, yeah. mean, I don't. Oh, he's I mean, fantastic. He's yeah, a I like. Great him. worker. Uh, what else? Do we have anything else? Uh, WB looking to do a premium pay per view. So as if you don't spend enough on the Peacock to watch your pay-per-view, oh, yeah, they, they want to do back. a premium one now. Okay. So I don't know how many. They're just looking at maybe doing some premium pay-per-views. Go back to the Boy, UFC. Boy, well, what a kick in the nuts that is with the way the economy is today. It... I, I bet you that's an Endeavor move. Yeah. Yeah. That is Endeavor now going to start to what's figure out. You know, we got to remember, now that Endeavor is part yeah. of this, you may see a move away from the Peacock. You know, you may see like we're not, we don't, we want to now. I got to imagine that the end goal here is to create an ultimate streaming platform for UFC and WWE combined. They now have the content for that. I w- I don't know the length of the Peacock deal and how far that's going to go. Twenty five, I think. Is it? I would be very shocked if that deal real. gets renewed, and I can very easily see some kind of streaming platform. Because look at it, you could. There's already three WWE shows. You can't find two UFC shows. You have a you have a live show every night. You know what I mean? Like yeah. a live show. I mean, the, you, you could do a UFC event every Friday night, move SmackDown to another night. 26, 2026. 20, 26. I mean, there is some serious content that they can build off of those two. And Endeavor probably going to do that. So I wouldn't be I wouldn't be shocked. Um, and last but not least, uh, AEW fi- filing the rights for Wrestle Dream. Yeah. Oh yeah. I heard is that, that kind of? A, are they trying to do the WrestleMania type thing? Maybe. Or that, or that or like oh. a tough enough show? I don't know. Well, that could oh, be. Oh, Wrestle Dream. Yeah, maybe. I didn't think of that. I but, don't know. Uh, Attitude Area. I was getting some bad images in my head. <laughs> oh my God! Uh, another pillow fight or something. What is this? <laughs> Other than that, um, Nick constant email out to all WB personnel. You must be in the office full time by May first. Mm-hmm. The fun and games are over. Everyone should be mm-hmm. scared for their jobs now. Is reported. So everyone How many is, layoffs do you think there's going to be? Because you know I there's going to be layoffs. I think they're going to cut quite half. a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Half. I, I mean, half. unless they can half. relocate them to some type of other job. but Half. I think you'll see a 50% reduction. Because there's got to be so much overlay between the two companies yeah. from a production standpoint, production from a support alone, yeah. standpoint. Yeah. I think you're going to see a 10 to 20% trim from UFC and a 50% haircut. Hmm. And it's back a house too. It's a lot of like website yeah, design, all, you know, yeah, all that all type of accounting. Like you, don't, you don't need two different. You know, you know, they can link all that together. Yeah. Hopefully, they let go of Pritchard. I'd love to just see him unload on Conrad's podcast. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't that know. NDA is going to be pretty. <laughs> all right, we made him wait long enough. Adam wants ah. to go crazy with the new belt, so let all it right. out, Adam. All right. Well, here's the thing, guys. So, as I said before in the raw review, we tabled the. Triple H segment. So he comes out, he unveils this brand new, beautiful World Heavyweight Championship title belt. And then he goes on to explain what it's going to be. That there's now going to be two champions. There's going to be the World Heavyweight Champion and the Universal Champion. And then after that, he goes on to basically totally bury Roman Reigns. You know, like, dead, throwing the dirt in the casket. He's, you know... I bet, you know, he throw you know, this title is going to be for the guys who want to wrestle and who are going to wrestle every week and who are going to be at every show. And, you know, because we all know that Roman Reigns is a part timer. So exactly. So what does that mean now for the belts? 
We got one guy who's going to show up to every show and carry the flag for the WWE, and then we're going to have one belt that can be passed between Roman Reigns, The Rock, and Brock Lesnar. <laughs> you, you know, I mean, Maybe. but but in the end, this is why two champions is a terrible idea. Because either way, you know, after all the fuss of two champions and the draft, and uh, you know, is settled down, one champion always is favored uh, that is more favored than the other. So again, you you eventually one belt is going to be useless until they realize, wow, we're really sinking our stuff here. Let's combine them again. The WWE, and when it was the WWF, has always thrived when it was one champion. One face of the company, pushing the brand, pushing the company into the pop culture and beyond wrestling. Hulk Hogan, Steve Austin, The Rock, John Cena. They don't have that right now. They need one. Especially with this endeavor, they need someone to pick up that flag and go. And unfortunately, guys, it's not going to be Roman Reigns or Seth Rollins. I think it's going to be Cody Rhodes. And I'll get to that in a minute. But the idea of two champions is just so stupid for both shows. Because you know, you confuse your audience. You know, uh, just a casual watcher is going to watch Raw and see one set of champions. And then they're going to watch SmackDown and see another set of champions. And then they're going to watch NXT and see another set of champions. It's like, where are we here? What's going on? I mean, the geeks like us who watch every week will understand it. But someone who, you know, bounces in every couple months because they like watching the big pay-per-views, they have no idea what the hell's going on. So, I mean, and, you know... And to split champion, I mean, like, could you imagine? All right, just walk with me down. It's 1998. All right, post the, the World Series is over, and George Steinbrenner says, pulls a press conference and says, "Okay, guys, next year, if you want to see Andy Pettit, Derek Jeter, and Mario um, uh, Tino Martinez, go to the stadium in the Bronx. If you want to see Mariano Rivera." Bernie Williams, and Jorge Posada go to AAA in Tampa. Choose who your champion is. How stupid is that? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. How stupid is that? Choose your champion. Because the thing is, is again, and it's not saying that Seth Rollins... Uh, Roman Reigns aren't great wrestlers and aren't going to be go down in history as some of the greatest wrestlers in all time. They are not at the pop culture status that they need to be to carry the company. Think of all the guys, Hulk Hogan, the Bobby Heenan family, you know, Ted DiBiase, the million dollar man. He built Hulk Hogan up. Hulk Hogan transcends pop culture. Steve Austin, Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, The Rock, they build, you know, Mick Foley, Vince McMahon himself. They build Steve Austin up. He transcends pop culture. He pushes WWE forward into the lexicon of what we know is entertainment. The Rock, the same thing, Triple H. Mick Foley again pushes him up, and he's still impacting pop culture as we speak today with his movies and bouncing back and forth between the WWE. John Cena, Randy Orton, Triple H. Batista, you know, this guy, he crossed, you know, they did it in a fashion where they went back to the PG and they cut him in and, you know, now he's the childhood hero just like Hulk Hogan was, transcends the WWE. Now he's in Hollywood. This is the, this is the importance of having one champion because the one champion and the guy, you know, the face of the company like that brings the product to everybody else. Not just the geeks. Not just the niche. They don't have that right now. Cody Rhodes can be it. He's got the crowd eating out of his hands. He's the best performer they got. Plus, he's already dipped his toes outside of the wrestling. 
with his um, um, Stardust character on the Arrow series. Plus, we all know that at WrestleMania, he was in Hollywood auditioning and talking to agents. He's pushing beyond. He, he can bring the WWE into this next generation with Endeavor. But why aren't they giving it to him? Okay, so if I understand your argument here, it's there should be one champion. Mm -hmm. It should be the Universal Championship. It, I don't care if they call it the World Championship. You don't care if they call it. It's one champion. And it should be Cody Rhodes. I think he's the only one with potential to carry it. But even, even if – take Cody Rhodes out. What? Yeah. I have to jump in here in a minute. Right. You keep going. Yeah, I, you're, the Roman, I, Roman Reigns, I don't know how you cannot say – He's not in the list. I mean, I wasn't a Roman Reigns fan for a while, but, like, he is up there with John Cena. He's getting to that point. Like, when you think of wrestling names... When you say transcends, what are you talking about? Right. Beyond, beyond wrestling. So he's in movies. He's in movies. He's, he, he's, he's the pop culture icon. Yeah, but is Roman Steve Reigns? Austin, does he transcend outside of WWE that much? Yeah. Besides, yeah, okay. He, okay. He, he now in, he, now he, he does, but, he like, back in, in the day, did he? Yeah, because he brought in the Attitude Era in sent the company through the roof here's the here's the issue that i have with what you're saying and i think what you're saying has some merits all the people when i think about all the people that you named yeah chronologically as time has progressed yeah. the company has gotten bigger and the names that you listed they all coexist together the rock and steve austin and Mick Foley. these are people that traded championships with each other mm. throughout the same yeah, period but, of time so when, if they can transcend, I don't see why a guy like Seth Rollins and whoever and whoever and Cody Rhodes can't transcend simultaneously. I'm not saying they can't, but they got to put it on one person and let them do that. Be yeah. Go ahead. Before the bloodline, mm -hmm. I agree with you on Roman Reigns. He was a John Cena. WWE was trying to push him like a John Cena wannabe. You know, we want you to like him. We want mm -hmm. you. And I agree with you that, that Roman Reigns isn't clicking off. Now, with the, as, as long as the storyline has gone on, it has gone on long enough, he is now, like, when you think of wrestling now, no one, you know Roman Reigns. Like, any wrestling fan knows Roman Reigns. Not, any wrestling but, fan. But I'm not no talking about any wrestling fan. fans. I, I if, mean, you, if we walked out this uh, right. studio right now and showed a picture of Roman Reigns to someone, uh, to a random person who knows wrestling, they're probably going to say, is that Jason Momoa? Could be. Well, let me ask you. Okay, but let me but throw this But if you take so, you. a picture of The Rock... Well, or well, John Cena, they're going to know who it is. Different. And it's different because back then when The Rock was just in WWE or WWF at the time, not many people knew him because he wasn't in movies yet. You got, you got to, I think you look, I agree with you that. Yeah, yeah you're right too now, early. You're too early in Roman Reigns' career. The Rock yeah. is now 20 years after his wrestling career. Stone Cold, 20 years after. Like, he's now doing, like, you got you to gotta look at. Roman Reigns now to when The Rock was when he was champion, and you got like you got to compare the periods of their careers. I'll do it. I think I'll I do think it. down the road I think Roman Reigns could. I mean I, I don't think he'll get to Rock. Who who's ever gonna get to right. Rock level? Right. I, I mean, even, but like here's even a, with I'll, hey, I'll, one second, even with The Rock though, before he became a mainstream star, non wrestling fans did know the eyebrow. Oh, they knew. Oh, I love the you, you can't beat The Rock. I love The Rock. Here's the thing. I'll. Counter your argument with, you know, what does Roman Reigns have that The Rock didn't in his career? The Rock hosted SNL when it was at its height, and he hadn't done any movies. Yeah, he was invited to host SNL. He crossed over. Hulk Hogan was invited to be on Johnny Carson. Crossed over. Hulk. Right. Um, so what's Steve, the equivalent of that? Today? Steve Austin fights with Mike Tyson in the ring. Well, see here. Here, see, see here's what I think. Yeah. Here's where I'm going to say. Where I, I think, okay, I think, so I think the argument's two different things here. I don't think Roman Reigns has the character skills and the character developments to get those type of jobs. I think he's iconic in his name alone. But let me give you the example. My example that would match what The Rock was and what he was doing during that time would be The Miz. Look at The Miz. Miz has a lot of catchphrases, has a lot of cool things. Look at he has his own TV show. He's awesome. He's doing like I mean he's when you look at I always say the Miz is a side development of the rock. The rock, the Miz. If you smell awesome, like there's there's a lot of things that are very close to each other 
that mirror his own type of character development. Well, look where they both have gone. The Miz is doing more things outside of WWE right now. And he's on TV. Entertainment-wise than he yeah. is in WWE, and he's still a current wrestler. I don't think... I would put Roman Reigns like Triple H. That great heel, great development. Triple H wasn't getting TV deals. Triple H wasn't on SNL. Well, he was for like a skip, but he wasn't on hosting it. He wasn't doing like... I think the heels don't get as much TV time and much entertainment opportunities probably as the big baby face, The Rock, The Miz, you know, John Cena. I think you got to look at character development a little bit in that too. I was arguing more, are they iconic name-wise as a wrestler, as an icon wrestler? So, but I think you're talking more like outside. So I may, maybe I got that a little wrong. Well, Roman Reigns is going to go down as one of the all-time great wrestlers. Right. But as a pop culture figure that came from wrestling. Fair. He's not. I, I'm, you know, at least not now. He but I don't think he gets a chance to do that. Right. I don't think his character is allowing him to do that. Right. The Rock was a heel for half of his career. Right. I, I, do you have to transcend wrestling in order to bring move the business forward? Is that a requirement? I th- or within I, the business? I, I, I think to, to, to move it to a, another level, you need that star. I think somebody like Roman Reigns, and this kind of goes back to what I was saying at the beginning, the company is a lot bigger and they're moving towards a more global audience today than they were 10 or 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I think Roman Reigns and maybe Cody Rhodes are two of the guys that are going to take him there. And I think in that world, you don't have to be an action movie star or put out your own country music album or, you know, spread yourself out across multiple genres. I think it's a world in which you can become an icon in India. You can become, and that's what John Cena was going for. That's why he learned Mandarin Chinese because he knew that they were spreading out and they were going to become a global presence. But I think now the company is actually ready to do that. This deal with Endeavor is going to dramatically increase the size and the resources of the company. Uh, professional wrestling is the second most popular sport in India, which is now the most populous country in the world. So I think those two guys can take them internationally. I don't know whether you should have one champion or two champions. That's an interesting thought. But I don't think it's. I don't think you have to become an action movie star or whatever, where the company is at now, in order to move the company forward. I think just by taking it international and having an international presence, somebody that can get a pop in Saudi Arabia and right. India and the United States <clears throat> and Mexico, is really what they're looking for. Which maybe is why they're not pushing him that hard, at the end of the day. But I think you're right in that we're in a lull period right now with the company. Like it feels mm-hmm. like we're kind of in transition. Right now, it doesn't feel like we're working towards something, in my opinion. That's just what I think. Well, I think Roman Reigns has a big question mark on him. And he's mm. only part-time. I mean, like, that's now he, He's got to go full-time. Well, yeah. that's, that's, that's when you were just saying they're going to take it to the next level. Is Roman going to be here for that? I mean, like, I what know. is... Yeah. I mean, if he's part time, is he trying to work on what you say he's lacking? Like, is he trying to get into movie deals? That's why he's part time. Like, why is he part time? Is it personal reasons? Is it health reasons? Is it is, it, is he trying to work on his image and his and his own branding? Like, why? That that that's a question that needs to be answered. Why is he part time? And maybe yeah. that answers a lot. What you're like, if he's really trying to do a movie deals, maybe a year from now you'll start to see. Oh, this is what he was doing when you. Yeah. And when The Rock went part time, that's what he was doing. The Scorpion King, The Mummy, like he was doing a lot of that stuff. That you know, that maybe Roman's trying to do now. I don't know. The Tooth Fairy. Yeah. The Tooth Fairy. I was thinking that's the a classic. <laughs> Doom. That Doom. is, uh, yeah, Doom. That was a really good rant. But I, but, I am but, a believer but, of the two but, belts. But so. again, you know, I like the two belts. We, 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 we always talk, you know, again, we've talked about the last couple of weeks of, you know, the, this brand split. And, and again, I, I, I'm old school in the fact I think the title should matter. Having one champion, you know, and that not just the whatever, the universal or heavyweight champion, having one IC champion, having one tag champs, you know, it, you know if, if you're claiming that your roster is so bloated that you need to do a roster split, all right. What if we did this instead? What if instead that the champions take t- uh, turns rotating main events on each uh, Monday and Friday? So, you know, Monday, the, your main event is the Intercontinental title. Next week, it's the World Heavyweight title. Next week, it's your tag titles. And then you let the whole rest of the roster fight it out below you. So now not only are you giving your roster that can't get the time of day seen, 
but you're also making your titles relevant again because it's something to right, every couple watch. of weeks. It's gonna yeah, be it's back something up to again. watch. It's something to be interested in. It's something to fight mm-hmm. for. I agree with that. I could be wrong, but my understanding of the brand split always was not just a bloated roster, but they have the one brand of WWE that they made a success. What if we had two brands we could make a success? WWE Raw, WWE SmackDown. That's why they had the separate champions, so right. that they could push two brands rather than just one. That was always my understanding. That's what I was about to say. I think the only reason why they have two champions is because they are branding it as two completely different shows. Right. And and I gotta say, I, I disagree a little bit with you, Adam. I like the two belts. I think the two. I like the two. Cha- I think they screwed up this whole situation right. with this. I mean, don't you're gonna put the title on one guy and make this whole storyline, then you're just gonna cut him, and throw him under the bus, and create another title? Like that just that gets rid of everything you just did with Roman Reigns. That's the problem. They do a brand split. Somebody ends up catching fire, and the fans like more. So then they have to combine everything again. The brand. How about split Roman Reigns loses the belt, and you just move that belt over? Like, you know, they just can't do anything. Or why don't you fight one guy? And just make one belt on the line. Where if Roman loses, he just loses the one. Like, I don't know. They put himself in a corner with this whole Roman Reign thing. I thought the story was great. The solution would have been just to give it to Cody Rhodes, but they screwed that up. And I don't know. I I, I like the belt. I like the idea. I think they kind of screwed up the whole thing with it, though. Well, this kind of transitions us really well into our first topic of conversation, which was the belt, frankly. Um, Yeah, right. Exactly. Um, (laughs) So we kind of touched on this a little bit at the beginning, but my question to you, Dan, is, and we kind of have started to have this discussion, but not specifically about this. Visually speaking, what do you think of the belt? I mean, is this a good belt? Is this a bad belt? Is it better than its predecessor? Should we add it to our collection here? I mean, what do we think about the belt? What do you think about the belt? I like it better than, and I've always loved the old World Heavyweight belt. Up until this one came out, or these ones came out, that was my favorite. So I would... You know, I like the new one over that. I like the I like the W logo in the middle. But you know, you remember when that one got introduced, right? The, the crowd booed yeah. so the hard. The red one, the Universal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I don't like the name, the Universal. No. I think that's a stupid name. I, I thought at the time they did it, it was just a cheesy ploy off of the WWE Universe. Like I was like, really, we're gonna get, we're gonna call it this cheesy name? But um, I've always liked World Heavyweight Champion. WWE champion, mm-hmm. pretty, you know, pretty good name. Universal champion, I never really liked the name. Outside of the name, I love the design. Absolutely love the design. There should be a red one, and there should be a blue one. Okay, <laughs> I, that's all. No black, get rid of, no. Like, I like, I mean, this one is iconic. I mean, this is like the true original of this series. Yeah. Um, you know, but I like this style more than I like the new world hat. I'm a big believer in you. That's why I have two of them. I want to get the blue one. Um, I think they're clean. I think they look nice. I think, you know, I don't like the AEW title. I think there's too much. I think it's too big. I think it's too cluttery. I like a clean, simple belt that's not too small. Like, like the women's belt, for example. I don't like the size of the women's belt. It's not this size. The AW one. You no, mean? no, no. The WWE oh. Women's Raw. Like it's like this belt, but a little white. bit smaller. Yeah. In white. I, but I don't like the small. Like they should make it the same. I don't like like when you look at a belt. Is it you gotta look at it too big, too small, simple, too busy. Like I think the AEW belt is just way. It's it's, it's a mess. I, I looked. At, I saw it the other day. There's just way too much stuff going on there. I, that's my personal opinion. Am I the only one who likes the winged eagle? I like okay. it. I like it better than any of the current ones. Yeah, I mean, okay. that, I, I mean, again, you know, that could just be me. Like, my first birthday cake, I had two because my parents were arguing, Mickey Mouse and Hulk Hogan. So that winged eagle is cemented in my brain. And to me, that's that's the championship, that's the belt. But again, like I, I was saying, these are nice. You know, these were definitely a huge upgrade from the spinning. Oh, yeah. Belts. Um, I did always think, though, it looked a little comic booky. Perfect for the PG era. But if we're moving into something different, you know, you got the, the WWE logo right in the center behind a globe, you know, and you got some class around. I think it's a beautiful belt. Mm-hmm. I'm, yeah. I'm an old school fan. 
I like wrestling, wrestling. I want a championship that looks expensive, that looks like a prize. That's my favorite that, belt yeah, that right there. That definitely looks like a prize. That's my favorite yeah. one right there. A close second is the NWA title, the, the rectangle one with the dome in the middle. Freaking love that belt. This new one, it's definitely, I agree with what you said earlier, it's the nicest belt they've put out in the last 10, 20 years. Yeah. And it, like you said, it looks like a prize to be to be had. With the exception of maybe like NXT UK titles. I love those titles. But All right, last question on this topic. Go around the table right now. This is a one-name answer. Who should win the new title? Dan. The new one? The new one that just came. Who should win it at Night of Champions on May 27th? Who should it be? One name. I don't want any context. I don't want any details. Give me a name. Seth Rollins. Cody. Finn Balor. Cody. Ooh, I almost said Finn Balor, too. I was debating <laughs> that one. I think Finn Balor's a perfect fit, but I won't go into it. Um, topic two. So uh, we touched on this, of course, like everything else. The hottest news in AEW has been... You know, the potential return of CM Punk uh, to the screen. Rumors indicate that, of course, the new Collision show is going to be specifically designed just to kind of keep him away from the elite. Um, and recently, he showed up at Raw in Chicago this week. There was a lot of buzz generated over the news. Um, his reign lasted from 2005 to 2014 in the WWE, but it ended in a pretty ignominious, I think, in uncertain fashion. Mm -hmm. Um he flew from Florida to Chicago to commentate on an MMA match, but then apparently ran into several superstars kind of on the plane, and it kind of turned into like a, why don't you come yeah, by the shop up. kind of a thing. And so he ended up um, going over there. Um, rumors are that he met with several members of talent, including The Miz, in the parking lot, and I was told that Triple H even kind of said hi to him. I don't know how much they actually talked, um, but that he was eventually kicked out by Vince uh, via telephone. So I guess my question is, and this is to the group, who gives a flying fuck? <laughs> like, is this, to me, this is a tempest in a teapot. Like, uh, either this is Tony Khan channeling his inner uh, Eric Bischoff, and he's just trying to, just, just showing up there because he's going to be in town anyways and he wants to stir the pot. Or he's going there, I mean, because at the end of the day, you could just make a phone call and say, hey, man, sorry about me dragging your name through the mud 10 years ago or whatever. Like, you could say whatever you needed to say over the phone. You didn't have to be there in person. Um, but at the same time, he's in Chicago anyways. Like, it's not implausible that he would want to go visit his ex-coworkers. I mean, I kind of feel like everybody's just making a big deal out of nothing. Yeah, any any CM Punk news is draws I feel eyes. like the media is making this yes, a story. Well, I don't know. CM Punk does a lot of things that's calculated. I'm sorry. Uh, CM, that, CM Punk too. disappeared from wrestling for how long? Like, Seven you know, years? I Seven. mean, and for him to kind of just come and just go to and just go to uh, pop in the raw a company that he's not part of, I think it was a ploy. Rather, it was like I said before, AEW, WWE wise. Any you chance know? this could be related to Cody's success at WWE? That Cody's maybe like talking, testing the waters to just, go back, or maybe like talking to some people. Like I think he Cody's wants back. I, I personally think he wants back at WWE because he's. Uh, the, the wounds are too fresh in AEW, and because the wounds are, I mean, Vince kicking him out right on the, you know, right off the bat like that. That's that's telling on Vince's position. Like, get out of here. We don't want you associated with our product. You're still with AEW. Well, no, I think Vince doing it is just the proper business way of, decision. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's under contract. Not, with he's AEW. under contract with AEW. It's just smart. And again, if it's a ploy. Vince doing that gets perceived like we want you out of here when really you know you don't know what's going on. The reports know. I read said that he did not enter the locker room like it was he, he was, was in always a common area, the common yeah. area the entire time. Uh, he was in backstage. Or I anything. have long said, how many more surprises return? Surprise returns there can be in WWE. You can only have so many of them. The Rock returns, Stone Cold. Like now it's just Goldberg. We need like, more people to retire. But yeah, right. <laughs> I've said the last major return that would be huge for WWE would be CM Punk. If I'm Triple H and if I'm Vince, I'm going to do whatever I can to get that guy signed. Regardless of whatever happened in the past, whatever, I'm going to do what I can, what's best for business to get those guys, to get him back on the show. I don't know. I think it's, CM Punk knows that. 
And I think that's probably why he was there. Rather, it helps him get signed with AEW or WWE. I think he has a niche again. I think he's ready to go with either company. And I think him showing up there, it gets both things going. You know what I mean? Uh, it, it could. I To me, it just sounded like a lot of CM Punk just going in for business for himself to make headlines. Personally, I think he just took it up. You know, they're in Chicago. He took it upon himself to show up. Trying to keep yeah. attention on himself. Yeah. Um, because again, you know, and you're right. I'm, I'm sure, uh, Triple H and Vince McMahon would, you know, happily negotiate a return for CM Punk, but he's under contract with AEW and they can't afford a lawsuit, especially with the Endeavor <laughs> deal going on right now and the other, uh, seeming lawsuits that are coming down the pipeline. So that's one you want to avoid. Interesting. But I, I think it's CM Punk just going into business for himself. Nothing more. Well, let's transition that into the next conversation on AEW, which is that on Wednesday night we saw the conclusion of the Four Pillars tournament to determine who would be the number one contender I for see the championship. Blow. I'm, I'm Pat. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> guys, don't let him blow. Let, let me get through this. So the match ended when MJF ripped off Eddie Guerrero's chair move, except it was with a skateboard to cleverly get Darby Allen DQ'd. Um, after the result, Tony Khan appeared and announced that a tag team match, heels versus faces, basically, um, would determine how things would proceed. So, Matt, as our as our professor, especially of AEW studies, in here, um, we basically traveled all this way just to end end up right where we started. Uh, One it, big circle, folks, right? Folks, if you look closely on your TV, you can see a little vein <laughs> in his forehead. Yes, <laughs> note the vein. That's um, the aneurysm. Uh, clearly, we're trying to stretch for time in between the next pay per view. Um, Monday morning quarterback this thing for us. How could Tony Khan have booked the space between Revolution on March 5th and uh, Double or Nothing on May 28th? How could he have filled that space better? It started out well before they did the whole tournament angle. It was a couple weeks after the last pay-per-view. MJF was beat up, throwing himself a celebration. All three guys, all three of the other guys come out to the ring saying, we deserve a shot, blah, blah, blah. And MJF told them they have to start winning matches. You guys aren't up at the top of the card. You don't deserve mm -hmm. a, a shot. And for the next several weeks, they did. They all went out and won matches. Um, the one versus Darby Allen versus uh, Swerve Strickland, you know, I talked about a couple weeks ago. Could have done something better that way, but regardless. But once they introduced this tournament that's only two matches long, and in the first week, Darby gets a bye, so it's Sammy versus Jungle Boy. Sammy cheats, he moves on. This week, it was Sammy versus Darby. They have a dusty finish, which, again, using the Eddie Guerrero-type spot, okay, spot. that's that's always entertaining. But um, it's better when the babyface does it than the well. heel. But I just... So what that, could they that have done option, better? So tell me what they could have done better. Instead of going into the tournament like they did, what should they have done? Briefly, they could people. they could have done it the same way with MJF and Sammy saying they're going to work together, make an elimination match. They get the other two out of the match at the pay-per-view, and then it's just one-on-one. -on -one. Then they can do that whole check angle they did. I'll pay you to lay down for me. Whatever. Just having the whole tournament element, saying it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one match, and then when the heels cheat to win oh, no, we're going to have another match, and these guys are going to get a second chance to get back in. It, like you said, it just we went around in a circle just to end up back in the same spot. Two things that it did. It's just disappointing. I mean, we all know we're going to get an unbelievable match at Double or Nothing. Absolutely. That four-way is going to be an insane match. But the other negative thing that came out of it is, and it's negative right now, but I, I hate to be critical of him, but the Internet just keeps roasting Jungle Boy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he is a, what are they, I saw him called a black hole of charisma. Tonight. I mean, he's just getting, the poor guy is just getting roasted because he's clearly doing his best and he is not on the stick. We need Paul Heyman to move over to AEW. When, he, when he's there with Darby and MJF and even Sammy to a degree who are all excellent on the on the mic. Even when he's next to he Darby. He out. He, when, even when he's next to Darby, he has, he has a sore thumb. But if, if he ends up great on the mic in two years, five years, it'll be worth it. But right now, that is one thing that people weren't really talking about before because he wasn't on the stick very often. But now, again, making him one of the four pillars 
it becomes very obvious where his shortfalls all they all can wrestle like like crazy but on the stick he is just he's junk he needs to he's he's junk old boy he's junk on the stick <laughs> so it, there's a new hashtag <laughs> hashtag junk old boy. um anyways all right guys well like uh dan's favorite wwe championship we too must retire to the darkest seediest corners of professional wrestling never to be seen or heard from again just kidding uh, but that's all we have time for this week on Wrestling with the Business. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Insane Games TV for more updates and commentary. Please, if you haven't given us a follow on Facebook at Wrestling with the Business, do that. And Twitter at Wrestle with Biz. Um, I'm always providing snarky commentary and golden brown tidbits on that one. So please be there. In the meantime, you keep watching, and we'll keep wrestling with the business.